This is a short presentation on how to solve the two group neutron diffusion equations for, uh, for simple uh, geometry to obtain the exact solution and the numerical solution using MATLAB. Now it's something which students should be familiar with because when you go on to higher levels, when you go to uh, more complicated models, then this serves as a reference. Uh, I am Professor Dr. Zafrullah Qureshi, Professor at Air University. My email is given over here, zafrullahqureshi at yahoo.com. If there's any question, I'll be happy to answer. <clears throat> okay, so let's uh, look at our model. Uh, these are the two equations which represent the uh, balance of neutrons coming in from the left side, going out of the right side. So for the fast group, we've got D1, D2, phi1, dx squared, the leakage term, minus sigma r1, phi1, the removal term. Removal would mean uh, capture in group one, as well as uh, downscattering into group two. Plus, if you've got any other direct source, independent source in the slab, then you can put it over here in the balance equation. Now, in the uh, second group balance equation, we've got the leakage term d2, d squared phi 2 dx squared minus sigma r2 phi 1 plus the source, which is a downscattering source from the fast group. So these are two second order ODEs with constant coefficients for the moment. So we'll just look at a very basic problem. The boundary conditions, it's a slab of uh, width L and uh, you could say that uh, it is infinite in the Y and uh, Z directions. Now, if you were doing a Monte Carlo simulation, then of course you'd have to specify the, uh, the length and height of the slab. So when you do a Monte Carlo simulation, you can compare your results with diffusion theory by taking the other two, the other four surfaces as reflective. So here we've got uh, mixed boundary conditions. We've got the Neumann boundary conditions, which is the current boundary condition incident on the left face, which is minus D1, D phi one DX at X equal to zero is S over two. So it's an anisotropic source, which is hitting the left face in the right direction. Now <clears throat> we've got uh, the uh, Dirichlet boundary conditions, the fast flux vanishes at the right boundary and the thermal flux is zero at the left and right boundaries. The data we will consider for now is the two group uh, data for water taken from Lamarche, introduction to nuclear engineering for D in group one and two and for the removal cross sections in group one and two. First thing, what uh, we can go through is the state space representation where we want to put the two second order ODEs into four first order ODEs of this form, Y dot is AY plus BU. Now U is the control, it's the input, and uh, Y, the state variables are the outputs. So if you define Y1 as the fast flux and Y3 as the thermal flux, and you define Y2 as phi1 prime and Y4 as phi2 prime, then you're able to have Y1 is phi1, Y2 is phi1 prime, which is also Y1 prime. And similarly, Y3 is phi2, which means that Y4 is phi2 prime, which is Y3 prime. As you can see, this gives us our state space equations with a four by four matrix for A and a column vector for B. The input is S as I just mentioned. <clears throat> the alpha, beta, gamma, and delta in the previous equation, uh, the over here in the A matrix, as you can see, we've got uh, alpha over here, beta, gamma and delta. So these are constant terms which are given here. You can verify that. So uh, having said that, let's get to the exact solution. Now the fast uh, flux, the governing equation 
is a, is a homogeneous second order ODE. Uh, I am uh, not counting S because we'll introduce that through the boundary condition, uh, through the Neumann boundary condition. So we can directly obtain a complementary solution for phi 1, which comes out to be A1 e to the x over square root of tau. Tau is the neutron slowing down uh, area plus A2 e to the minus x over square root of tau. The uh, equation for the thermal flux phi 2 has a complementary solution with a diffusion length L plus a particular solution with a constant term eta where eta is sigma r1 over sigma r2 tau over tau minus L square which is also a constant equal to 3.31. Now I don't think you should have any problem in this. This is just a standard uh, sum of the complementary solution plus the particular. The way I do particular solution is to use the derivative operator as a scalar, I put it in partial fractions and then uh, bring the derivatives from denominator to the numerator, uh, write it down as a binomial series and the terms cancel out uh, nicely and you easy, easily, you easily obtain uh, the particular solution which is shown over here. So we've got four constants, A1, A2, A3, and A4. We've got four boundary conditions. When you solve, which I'll just show you in the MATLAB program, then you get these values for the four boundary conditions. Let's take a look at the MATLAB code. So in the state equations, so these are all comment lines. The first thing that you do is you uh, designate uh, x1, x2, x3, x4, uh, or y1, y2, y3, y4 as symbolic uh, uh, variables. And uh, we've got two equations over here. We've got uh, four first order equations, two second order. So I just wrote down these equations, which I showed you in the previous slides. Uh, the material is water. So what you need to do is set the density of water, the molecular weight, the Avogadro number. The number density of water is the gram density times Avogadro number over the molecular weight. So the microscopic cross sections, which uh, we got from Lavash, you can now uh, obtain the macroscopic cross section, sig R1, sig R2, tau, and L square. Beta was the term coming from the particular solution. So if you put a thickness of 20 centimeters for the slab, uh, and now a little change from the boundary conditions which said that the flux should be zero at the physical boundary. Uh, let's uh, do a little better. Let's try to find the extrapolation distances D1 and D2 for fast and thermal neutrons. So let's... Uh, take an approximation here that D1 is 0 0.7 times the mean free path uh, for the mean uh, free transport uh, path. So this comes out to be 0 0.7 sigma transport for group one. And the boundary then becomes the physical boundary plus the extrapolation distance D1. And what we'll say is that the fast flux vanishes at the physical boundary plus the extrapolation distance D1. So this is the matrix that you get and you can obtain the values for the four coefficients. The exact solution you can put down by defining two functions, flux one and flux two, which were shown on the previous slides to be A1 e to the x over square root of tau plus A2 e to the minus x over square root of tau and phi two is a three e to the x over uh, L two. L two is the diffusion length plus a four e to the minus x over L two plus the particular solution beta times phi one. Now to obtain the exact solution between zero and 20, uh, let's take uh, steps of 0 0.1 centimeters and evaluate both of these functions using the F eval command of MATLAB the first figure should give us the plots of the fast flux and the thermal flux. And we can put a legend over there to show which one is which. Uh, the currents leaving the slab, we can also uh, use Fourier's law minus 
d d5 by dx for the fast flux so j1 uh, water is the uh, so j1 on the left and the right side uh, of the slab uh, can be found uh, here what we are just getting for information is the uh, leakage current j1 at the right side of the slab and j2 at the right slab at the right surface of the slab also so this is minus d1 d5 by dx evaluated at the uh, boundary the physical boundary and uh, you can put in all the numbers the second step in the symbolic computing is to define the state equations so you can see that this is x1 dot is x2 x2 dot is minus f2 times x1 x3 dot is x4 x4 dot is gg3 times x1 plus gg2 times x3 where all these constants are defined down here on the previous slide convert the symbolic objects into strings for using matlab's desolve command so you define the four equations eq1 eq2 eq3 and eq4 uh, you can solve these equations uh, what we need to do is we need to put in the four boundary conditions so you can see that the first boundary condition says that the fast flux x1 is zero at l equal to 20 centimeters and uh, uh, j1 on the left boundary was minus s over 2 uh, d1 so if you put in the numbers then you get that x2 at zero because x2 is actually uh, d5 by dx uh, d5 1 by dx so that becomes this number over here this implies that the uh, current is zero at the left boundary now the two boundary conditions for the thermal flux are uh, that x3 in other words phi 2 is zero at zero and uh, phi 2 prime uh, sorry and phi 2 at the right boundary at l equal to 20 is also zero so these are three Dirichlet boundary conditions. This is the Neumann boundary condition. And then you just solve you, using desolve. You give the four equations as well as the four boundary conditions. Now, how do you get, how do you retrieve uh, the four state variables? You dot it with the solution that you've obtained over here. So you get x1 from the solution by saying, sol underscore a dot x1 similarly you do for the other three now to plot in matlab you need to convert the x1 sol x2 sol x3 sol and x4 sol into a matlab function which uh, you need this command the matlab function command in matlab and once you've done that then you evaluate these four functions uh, using f eval and you plot the functions with label uh, and legends. Now let's take a look at our results. This figure shows you the exact solution. So uh, the solid curve over here is the fast flux. Now remember from x equal to 0 to x equal 20 is the slab, which is infinite in the y and z directions. Now the fast flux, because there is a fast source on the left boundary, so it starts with a finite uh, magnitude and comes down it dies down until eventually it comes to a little more than zero because we've said that it's zero at the extrapolated boundary so this is what phi one looks like now what does phi two look like phi two there was no phi two in the beginning so it's zero and as phi one as the fast neutrons collide with the water molecules they give up energy and we assume that they come down into the second group so the second group flux rises while the, while the fast group flux dies out. So one is dying out and these neutrons come down to the second group. So the second rises and then it reaches a peak and then again begins to fall until it comes to zero at the extrapolated boundary. So this makes sense. It's uh, acceptable physically. We can say that this is what it must be. Now let's compare this with the MATLAB solutions. 
Now, these are the four state variables, x1, x2, x3, and x4. Uh, x1, which was in the previous slide, phi1, we get the same function. Uh, x3, uh, the blue one, which is phi2, you can see it starts from zero, it rises. Now, it's not a very good continuous function because remember we took a step size of 0.1. If you take a step size of 0 0.01 or better, then you will not get any straight lines, you'll get a very nice continuous curve over here. So this is x1, in other words, phi1. This is x3, in other words, phi2. And now let's take a look at the red one. The red one is x2. x2 is phi1 prime. Now, phi1 prime started as a negative number because we said that minus d1 phi1 prime is s over 2. So it starts as a negative number. Remember, it was minus 0 0.44 something, and it rises all the way to 0 over here. Now, the group 2 current phi2 prime is the green one, which starts positive and goes down to below 0 and you can see it's a negative number here, and it goes gradually up to zero again. Why is it positive over here? Because it's going up over here. So d phi, by, d phi 2 by dx is positive, as you can see, it's increasing. But from here, from this point onwards, you can see that the current, the green one, becomes negative because the slope becomes negative over here. So this is a way of solving uh, these equations using MATLAB. It's a very uh, useful tool. Uh, this was an easy problem, so we were able to get an exact solution. But if you were to say that the coefficients were not uniform, if, were, if you were to investigate the effect of non-uniformities or of mixtures, for example, if you were to make a radiation shield with uh, a mixture of a low Z material such as uh, water and a high Z material such as tungsten or lead or iron, as is done in radiation shielding, because you need a low Z to uh, slow down the fast neutrons, and then you need a high Z to remove the gammas that were produced uh, during the slowing down of the neutrons in the low Z material. So if you do not use a low Z and high Z material, then of course, you'll get a very high gamma dose because then there's nothing to capture the gammas. So a good neutron absorber is a low Z material because uh, the mass is not very different uh, from a neutron, a low Z mass, hydrogen and nitrogen are very close to each other. So there's a maximum energy transfer possibility in collisions over there. But the, the high Z uh, nuclei have a much higher uh, atomic uh, the mass number, the neutrons, so uh, there cannot be a lot of energy transfer. In other words, the heavy nucleus does not receive a lot of energy from the uh, hitting neutron, but it's good to absorb the uh, electromagnetic radiation. So when you, were, were, when you would advance to those problems, then the MATLAB numerical solutions would become very useful. So I leave you with an exercise over here that uh, try to get these results using the ODE45 function, which you would use with your eyes closed for MATLAB for any uh, system of ODEs, uh, regardless of whether they were this type or that type, unless you've got stiff equations for which there are other functions to use. Also, if you use uh, the function DVP for boundary value problem, now remember you've got initial value problems and boundary value problems. This is a boundary value problem. Initial value problems are those which have, uh, which have initial conditions specified, but you don't know what's going to happen uh, at the final time. So if you, have, uh, if you have a boundary value problem, you can use DVP 4C. So I leave you with this exercise. Uh, Thank you very much.